Hey everyone, welcome to day 10 where we consolidate our last few days into a big pay down your tech debt session. So we're going to refactor a lot of the mess we've been creating by sticking all of our business logic in the component and we're going to move that out to a business tier and then we're also going to introduce you to plain old TypeScript objects which are actually super useful in themselves. It's going to be a fun day and worth hanging out for. So when I have a look at my feed component I see there's just still truckloads of business logic in here even though I've sort of semi dealt with the user service story. When I look across this code base, the first thing I see is this ridiculous array of maps, um, which just looks like, man, this could should be strongly typed. But what we haven't covered yet from the command line is how to actually just generate a plain TypeScript class. So let's show you how to do that. So it's an ngg, and normally you'd do c as the abbreviation, but that's already taken for components, so you actually have to type it in. So why don't we generate a tweet class that's going to hold our logic that's going to presently be held in this map. So we're gonna have a body field, an author field, and all that kind of stuff. Now, when you get when one gets sparked up, initially there's pretty much just nothing here. Now we've talked before about constructors and some of the little uh, conveniences that TypeScript lets you do in a constructor. So for instance, if you were gonna have a property like um, author, or um, you were going to have a property like um, uh, date or whatever it was the properties you're going to have one way that you you would typically do that is you do something like author equals and then in here you might have you know uh, the author of type string and then in Java you'd do something like this you'd go this dot author equals the author well in TypeScript you can do this all in the actual constructor argument so for instance this whole property could be removed and you can just declare this as being private author, the author, and it creates, in fact, exactly the same code in the actual generated file. So we're going to take advantage of this for our tweet class. So I'm going to create our tweet class, our constructor here, and copy and paste it here. And you can copy and paste this from the blog post that matches this entry, Alt-Shift-F to rearrange it. So here we're taking in our body, our author, our date, our retweets, and I'm just actually got rid of the avatar property because in our case, it's always the author's ID followed by JPEG. So this is a little neat ES6 thing that you may not have used before. If you use backticks, this will use interpolation. So I can actually just reference this author field here and it will get pl um, plonked straight into that string before the assignment. So now I've got a tweet class. It's got all these properties like you know, this dot body and this dot uh, date and all those kind of stuff. They're all created automatically by declaring these uh, access modifiers on the actual constructor. So I've got that, it's up and running. Now let's refactor our massive tweets array by uh, instead of having a map, let's change this component here. So it's now just a whole bunch of objects. Now I'm gonna have to import that tweet object object which is from dot slash tweet and then I have a whole array of tweets real actual typed objects which is super super cool and if I was to run that in my editor in fact it's already sparked up but I'll well, just a refresh to prove to myself that's actually still working I've got all the functionality I had before just rather than using a map I'm now using some strongly typed objects so I can take advantage of completion and all that kind of goodness strongly typed goodness okay so now I've got this, but it's still a bunch of logic living in the feed component. It's time for us to abstract that out to a business component. So let's create a service. We've done that before. ng generate service. Uh, we're gonna make this the feed service, okay? So we're gonna make a feed service is gonna wrap some of this business logic so it can do some of the heavy lifting. Cool, okay, so we've got our feed service. So our next job will be to actually implement some logic in our feed service. So let's find our feed service. Here he is. Currently nothing in here and we haven't actually referenced anywhere for a provider for it. So we can't even inject it anywhere. So let's add it to our app module um, and put our feed service in here because then we can inject it later on. And we'll just copy this user service and change that to a feed service. Okay, so we have a feed service, we can now inject it. Save that and we can go into our feed component now. And what we will do here is we'll inject our private feed service, which is a type feed service. 
and we now have a feed service that's going to be able to do the heavy lifting of feed related operations. All right, feed service, great. So we've got a feed service, we've injected it, we've made a private property for it. Now there's all this nonsense on favorite, on retweet, on new tweet, all that kind of jazz. Let's just get rid of all that, okay? Because we will need feed service methods that do all this and this and this and probably we won't need that anymore either. So let's get rid of all of that. And we want some feed service operations to do this. So first of all, let's uh, implement our actual feed service. And our feed service will need a user service to be injected into it. So let's declare that private user service. Whoa user service of type user service and then that can be injected uh, and we'll have to import that import user service from dot slash user service remember we don't put the ts bit and then we have our type okay so we have a user service now let's just move all of that logic that we did have in the other class um, we will move straight into here so we'll add methods to do Favoriting, we'll add methods to do uh, returning our current tweets. In fact, let's just drag that whole tweet component across as well. Zoop, grab that out of there. And we'll paste that in here. And then we'll reformat everything and it'll need to know about a tweet. So we'll import our tweet class uh, from dot slash tweet. And then we have all of that pretty nicely abstracted. So that pretty much now knows how is user in collection. It knows how to post a new tweet. It knows how to retweet. It knows how to favorite a tweet, which is really just the logic we had before, but all wrapped in a nice service class. So we can now probably replace that in here. It'll still need some tweets because it's got to iterate over, uh, got to fetch them at some point and iterate over them. So let's just leave them there for now. Um, and we'll need to populate that somehow. So you could do this in the constructor. We could fetch our tweets here, but typically constructor is really just for class initialization and you don't really want to do any heavy lifting in it. So we might actually um, do our fetching in ng in it. Now our feed component implements, this is a good way to introduce you to some of these lifecycle methods on init, which is one of the lifecycle methods that Angular provides. And this is going to fire after the component has been created, but before the view is going to be initialized. So we're going to put some stuff in here that's going to go and fetch our tweets. So we're just going to call uh, equals this dot feed service dot get current feed. And that's actually going to return an array of tweets, which we've got here, an array of tweets, which is just our little static array here. Okay, so that's all done. Uh, really then all we've got to do is implement um, our actual logic. So I'm just going to grab a copy and paste section here for you as well. And this is just going to call favorite or feed service retweet, or we can probably get rid of that console log in a sec to post new tweet. So all the business functionality here. Okay, that's all done now. So we're now in a situation where we've moved all of the feed related logic into our feed service in preparation for us maybe to do this asynchronously down the track when we're actually fetching this via HTTP. So it's all ni nicely abstracted out. Now the view tier we've got to have a look at. Now, if we have an eye across here, most of these things are pretty good. So we're still iterating a tweet array. We have strongly, strongly typed properties now, so that's kind of new. Really the only thing that's different is, is user in collection, which uh, we can't do because we've moved all that into the feed service. I actually would like it if I could just ask the tweet, like, have I retweeted you or have I favorited you before? So what we might do is we might just um, change this is user in collection to just ask the tweet itself. Um, tweet dot uh, has favorited and I still probably will need to pass it a current user somehow. So maybe I'll just pass it that. And in retweeted, I'd love to ask the tweet tweet dot um, has retweeted. And again, just pass it the actual current user because we'll need to go to know what that is before we can execute. Then it's just a matter of implementing those two methods on our tweet object. So let's fire up our tweet object and let's, it's got pretty much a 
constructor and not much else at the moment. It's mostly the DTO. So let's add some of that logic on that tweet class. All right, all of that's in now. We finally have all of our tweet functionality happening. And now we will let that reload. And we have got our stuff here. Post a new tweet. Tweet. Yep, that's working. Can I favorite? Yep. Can I retweet? Yep. Can I only do it once? Yeah, that's all passing. So that's pretty much our whole cleanup tidy up for the day. It's a massive refactor. We've done heaps and heaps of business work, but we're now left with a very, very tidy feed component, which really only has a, me a few methods that are events that get cascaded through to an actual service call. And then we have a nicely encapsulated feed service that encapsulates all the business logic that I might want to need on this actual um, feed service. Now down the track, we're going to change this to actually use some HTTP calls so that we can actually do some uh, asynchronous programming here as well. So that's going to be super exciting. Stay tuned for that. Tomorrow, we're going to start looking at the router, which is going to be super fun. But I hope you enjoyed today's episode of Massive Code Cleanup and Refactor. And I look forward to seeing you tomorrow for the next step.